La Bamba soundtrack. Uh, this is different. We got a soundtrack here and eight out of the 12 songs are the band Lost Lobo. So it's almost like a Lost Lobo's cover album. Uh, what, what, what can you share with our listeners about this album, uh, Chris, if they haven't heard it yet? Oh, geez. Uh, just, you know, when we talk about, you know, everyone talks about, like, you know, what, what, what inspires you guys to be doing songs of this era, you know, whenever, after the show, a little bit of the older cats that like ask us after they're seeing us play. Uh, this is, this is the, my reason, you know what I mean? This, this album is my reason for, for doing what we, what I do, what we do. And, um, and just, you know, a lot of cool things, a lot of cool facts about that, uh, you know, especially, you know, the, the whole history of like the day the music died, of course, with Richie Valens and, and, you know, the nineties movies, uh, that the, depicts, you know, these artists and, and this La Bamba soundtrack was just, you know, was, you know, one of the, one of the main reasons why I, I got into this band, why I love a Lou Diamond Phillips. He's the best. And, uh, and also this, this era of music, like I said, like across the board, you got a rock and roll banger, like, you know, like, uh, like La Bamba or like, come on, let's go. And then, um, and then you have like these love songs about like, you know, Donna and we belong together. And I think, um, being, a, I'm very cheesy, you know what I mean? I may try to play cool a little bit, Joel, but really see I'm, I'm a, a cheese ball at heart. Just a softy. And, and I, and I love, and I love the songs that are geared towards just like someone that you really care about. And like Donna to me was like the most, like one of those iconic songs was just like, it's not, it's about you, Donna. And it's right here. And it's for you. You know what I mean? And, uh, and I've written a couple songs uh, that just have like, you know, the person's name in it kind of thing. And it's like, it, it's, it's all, it all comes back. It all comes full circle with me. And, and a lot of that is, is inspired by this album. And uh, I guess you can say those are some of the main points why I love about it. And the fact that Los Lobos, you know, took these songs, you know, and, and realistically kind of like, you know, 2.0 them production wise to bring to like a generation like ours, you know what I mean? And, and have it very, very digestible. Um, you didn't have to be necessarily into fifties and sixties music at the time. Like those old recordings, like you just had these like songs that have a fresh recording to it and you dig the melodies. You're going to, you're going to love this, uh, this, this, this soundtrack. But, you know, I think, and like I said, this one of the, as much as the meet the Beatles is something very similar uh, to Johnny and myself, I think one thing I, I Johnny's really into this album as well. You know, oh yeah, yeah. His, his reasons are it was like pop culture album too. I mean, the movie itself, like the La Bamba, like the the end scene. You know what I mean? Like people, people know it. Yeah, <laughs> like everyone knows it's that. Eye every time. Man. So you know, and um, so it's a pop culture movie, and this is the the subsequent soundtrack, and it's kind of crazy because it has gone full circle in many ways. Because um, like I mean, now we're down in California. Richie Valens was from California. We uh, we met Chan Romero. He was the guy who wrote the song "The Hippie Hippie Shake." He was supposed to be the next coming of Richie Valens after Richie Valens passed away. Chan Romero stayed with the Valens family. Mm -hmm. So we hear her, stayed in Richie's bed, you know, so we heard all the, the things. We actually have Richie Valens' brother's uh, phone number, which we never called Mario Valens. You, you guys actually say, cover that song, don't you? Hippie, hippie, shake. <laughs> which, 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 <laughs> which one, Joel? Uh, hippie, hippie, shake. You guys cover that, right? Yeah, it's been a while now. Brian used to sing that one, but yeah, we used to cover it. We played it with Chan Romero. So it's like, I don't know. And I mean, even Los Lobos, they're like an East LA band, like it's not far from here. You know, we know people who know Los Lobos, like Mark Guerrero. Yeah. So it's like, we're, we're, we're really close to, to that whole kind of scene. Not, not that we're part of it in any way, but I'm just saying we're, by being here, we're like, we feel this connection. We're close. You know, he was like, you know, Mexican American is like we're we're in California. We're close to the border. There's such a flavor here with the food, the people, and everything. So it's just I don't know. It feels like it's it's come full circle. You know, from loving this album, starting this band, this guy's childhood obsession, and now we're like here. It's like we're subconsciously getting closer and closer to like some some moment <laughs> or something. Which just know? looks like a fulfilling our own like you know our own dreams you know what i mean like we're down here we're making it happen and in that sense and just seeing where this all came from it's like we're fortunate enough to be playing american style rock and roll and making a living off of it and uh and just being inspired around you you know and playing richie valens tunes richie i mean valens, making, like we said earlier i mean it, like we're, we're doing how many songs off at least six songs off this la bomba come on let's go mm -hmm. donna we belong together frames summertime blues summertime, summertime blues, blues. 
We've even done um, Who Do You Love? Yeah, Who Do You Love? Yeah, we did, we've we done did Who Do You Love, which is... With Ronnie Hawkins, we played... Uh, yeah, Who Do You Love? Yeah. So, like, this this album, it's like whenever we're looking for new songs, we just kind of look to the track listing. Like, I should do that one. I really love playing Framed, though. Yeah, Framed's awesome. Check out the song Framed. The version, the Los Lobos version, it's a dirty, yeah, cool it's a, song. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a cool song. Um, and then you hear, obviously, the original versions done by Richie Valens and the band um, in the studio. And uh, it's, like, totally different. It's so much more raw. So Los Lobos, like you said, definitely made it more palatable for uh, in the 90s for people to get into this music. You also ask yourself, like, you actually tend to forget the fact upon listening to his music and also seeing himself in his, in his pictures this kid was 17 years old you look like an old man <laughs> he's, he's been like who seven. richie valens old. yeah look up like what he actually looked like you know he was looking old yeah he, yeah he, he's been he, he's had experience uh you know uh, not many 17 year olds i guess you can say uh, are, are you saying he was 17 like when he rose to fame or like when he died or died. yeah he was 17 when he died died man 17 going on 30. <laughs> he died. Holy man. <laughs> yeah, that, that whole story is just nuts. He accomplished too. a lot of, by 17. Jeez. He was like, he was on the rise and then it just, you know. He's still in high school when he wrote Donna and he's rolling up on his ride. His new, you know, you know drop top. You know what I mean? He was just freaking losing their minds. He's rolling into freaking high school. Like, you know, it, he's, he's an inspiration. He's, he's amazing. Yeah. California kid. California kid. And, and it, it was him passing away. Uh, in in an airplane that's considered the term the day the music died that's based on that right yeah yeah, yeah. him buddy holly and the big bopper like um, imagine like just yeah everyone just you've done such a rise to fame and, and the, the crazy thing was his one of his best friends he, um, and you'll see in the movie as well he was afraid of playing because his best friend when they're they're playing in the in the schoolyard and a, and a plane i guess malfunctioned and came crashing down and actually killed his best friend like right in front of him so he had a lot of nightmares and stuff like that growing up. And then he always feared going into like riding planes. Like, you know, and, and you'll see things where he's talking to his manager. He's like, nope, I don't ride. I'll take the train. We'll drive. And then eventually there was like a couple shows or, or whatnot where he was just saying, dude, you got to, we, we, in order to make this, we have to fly. We have to fly. And then for whatever reason on that cold, cold night, this little dingy plane, you know, he, 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 he was sick and, and whatever it was. And he made the decision to hop on that plane. And that was, uh, and, and it was, a, it was a coin flip. It could have been who, uh, him or who else was the other guy. I forget the other I guess guy. It was Dion or something. It was like Dion or something, but. Yeah, I don't know who it was. I but forget. I forget the person's name. I'm not sure if it was well known as Dion, but, uh, but yeah, that was the fate. That, that happened 17. And it just, and from there, just, he, he became immortalized. You know what I mean? Just so on all his accomplishments on how young he was, how he brought like Chicano, like rock and roll to the mainstream, you know, and, um, and yeah, at such a young age. Have, have you seen the movie La Bamba, Joel? I think like way back in the day. Um, so 1987 no is is two years after I was born. I feel like you were probably born around that year, uh, Johnny. I was born 87 too. 87, that's what I thought. I yeah. had a big brother. Yeah, so <laughs> I, I've seen it. I've seen it like probably as a kid, but I should go back and watch it. I, 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 I read up on it and it got great reviews and the soundtracks. The and Fox. My, 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 my dad told me when he first saw that movie, um, the impact that it had on people, people were leaving the, 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 the theaters crying and stuff like that. It was crazy. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're talking about the, uh, the airplane crash, uh, with Richie Valens. So in a recent deep dive, uh, we looked into the Ozzy Osbourne's Blizzard of Oz. So Randy Rhodes who died at 25 in a plane crash as well. So like we just, I just went through the the horror story of a young musician who had just broken through to superstardom, had changed what it meant to play guitar with the two hand tapping. It was Randy Rhodes right. with Crazy Train uh, and uh, Van Halen uh, around the same time those two guitarists changed the way you, you play guitar, the two handed tapping technique. And then another thing, I don't know why I'm getting into all these plane crashes all of a sudden, but uh, did you guys know that with nine 11, like the two planes that went into the towers, Seth McFarlane from family guy was supposed to be on one of the two planes. 
So oh, the creator wow. and the voice for Family Guy, it, it was something like he was out too late the night before and didn't hear his alarm. Like it was something as small as that, that he was 100% had his ticket and should have been on one of the two planes. So oh, to wow. see since then what he's done essentially with a free roll where he's like, I shouldn't even be here. So, you know, yeah. that's wow. Just- it's it's crazy. Anyways, I guess a few things about this album and we'll we'll wrap up to show the success of the soundtrack. So Los Lobos, uh, they hadn't really had a, a big breakthrough. Like they were talented, they were signed to a label, but they were selling like 50,000 copies. And then this album comes out, the single, their version of La Bamba goes to number one on the Billboard Hot 100. So it was only the, it was the fourth non-English single ever to go to number one on billboard like normally it has to be english for an english market right yeah so that goes to number one which then has the album sell three million copies and then los lobos have had a career for the last you know 30 years since then uh based on how big this was and uh, a few other things uh los lobos so i don't speak spanish so lobos i didn't know is wolves so it's the wolves yeah. That's no. Los Lobos. And they actually, you mentioned that they're they're from LA or California or whatever. So they actually were first called like uh, the Wolves of North California. It was something like a really long name and they oh. there was copyright troubles and they ended up shortening it down to just the Wolves. So they were the Wolves of like, I don't know, e- Eastern Los Angeles or something. Yeah. I think they were from East LA, which is um, that whole like scene. I'm pretty sure. But um, nice. Yeah, yeah. So uh, so we said La Bamba went to number one. Come on, let's go. And Donna were also hits that charted. And then I always reference Rolling Stone's 500 greatest albums of all time and Rolling Stone's 500 greatest songs of all time. And four of the songs on this album are on Rolling Stone's 500 greatest songs of all time. So uh, you have La Bamba, you have Lonely Teardrops, you have Summertime oh, okay. Blues, and uh the Bo Diddley song. Uh I guess love? yeah, whatever the Bo Diddley song one is, uh yeah. is is one of the higher charting, number 133 on the 500 greatest albums. So wow. just on one soundtrack, you have what are considered four of the greatest uh songs of all time. Yeah. Hey, no skip, stuff. no skip. No yeah, skip. yeah. <laughs> so Rolling Stone agrees with your choice, Chris. And uh we on the last interview with you guys, we dove into uh, your experience with Ronnie Hawkins quite a bit uh, before he passed away. And you mentioned a little bit. So who do you love? This is actually on the Wikipedia for this soundtrack. So like one of the biggest soundtracks ever, it says this, who do you love with that song? It says rockabilly singer Ronnie Hawkins performed. Who do you love during the live engagements uh, as early as the 1950s? So that song, who do you love is actually associated with Ronnie Hawkins when it comes to uh, yeah. the history of the soundtrack and the song. So I thought you guys would appreciate that. That's you said you played that song with him or something? Well, we didn't cover it. We covered it, but we played the final show at his um, famous property up in Peterborough. And um, it was cool because Ronnie was kind of sitting there. He's sitting with uh, Chris Christopherson. They're, they're good buddies. And they were just sitting kind of everyone would come up to them. He kissed the hand and say, hey, Ronnie, we're Sounds here. like the Godfather. Yeah. It was like the Godfather. But they managed to get Ronnie up on stage. So we had never seen Ronnie play. You know, he's in his, he was in his 80s, mid 80s and he got up there and played who do you love and i have it filmed on my phone too, yeah. and i was like the only time we ever got ronnie to see ronnie play live and you could just see this kind of sparkle this like way of this old school way of entertaining that it was still there even though he was old he maybe wasn't moving he was just uh, you know what i mean oh, yeah. like you could just see him in his facial expressions and he came to life <laughs> Point of people, yeah, he came to life. You're like, oh man, this is like an original OG first wave rock and roller right here. But he was like, man, he like he doesn't get the credit seriously. Like yeah. when it comes to like his stage moves, like man, he was doing the something called the camel, the walk, camel walk, which is like the mo- like the equivalent to the moonwalk. And like he's doing summer dude, he's doing doing back, he's like a gymnast, I believe they said, right? Like no one, no one can entertain like that. I know what like who's who's doing this stuff. You know what I mean? Like to the way that he did it you know what I mean? and all the iconic like stuff you know what i mean like like i said the dance moves the aerials you know what i mean the engagement like he he's he's great it's just it's so sweet that we got to got to meet him and and also recently yeah we just played in uh at lakefield that was the one we're doing i know um huntsville huntsville yeah was it huntsville 
I think this past gig, yeah, when we it were was the Lakeville gig, was it? It was the Lakeville gig, though, wasn't it? That the that they came out. I don't know. I'm pretty sure this was the other. It's all a blur. Oh, no, it wasn't the small. It was yeah, yeah, Lakefield. So, so it was Sorry, Lake, Lakefield. Uh, Lakefield. Uh, we played a gig at the theater, and uh, the the Hawkins family came out. Uh, Wanda Hawkins, uh, her sister uh, Dana, and also uh, their son Ronnie Hawkins Jr. Uh, came to come yeah, see us. It was nice to see them. See, this was just happened like a couple of weeks ago. They came to come see us, and they were talking about um, about another show that they'd like to get us on when we're when we're back. Oh man, I wish- they're they're so they're such great supporters of ours. We're so happy to to know them and grateful that they appreciate what we do. And uh, we're trying to keep the torch alive, you know, rock and roll. So then they came out. We we played forty days for them. The one that uh, you Ronnie know, that, Ronnie, that Ronnie rocked and uh, and just told a little story about it and uh, you know showed the praise. It was, it was it was great. Yeah, show to the Hawkins family. We love you. Yeah, Leah too. Leah, love it. Powerful shout outs. So one final point about Los Lobos, and then we'll wrap up. Would you believe me if I said that the first concert I ever saw was Los Lobos? Would you believe that? No, what? Yeah, I can't, I can't even take credit. So I was so young. My parents took my sister and I to a concert. I was so young. All I remember was I wanted pizza. So I didn't care. I didn't know who was playing. Music didn't mean anything. It was oh, like, can never I get changed. pizza? Can, yeah, yeah. Can I get pizza? Can I get pizza? And listen to this bill. Los Lobos was the, there's five artists. Los Lobos was the opener of five. Okay. okay. So Los Lobos, Wilco, Ashley McIsaac, Ashley McIsaac, Cheryl Crow, the oh. Tragically Hip. Oh, oh my that's God. my first what? show ever. Is Los Lobos is the fifth, like the opener of five. So that's that's, awesome. that's what created the the music, the infusion of of music by osmosis. Yeah. Full circle, Joel. Full circle, my friend. <laughs> How cool that's is that? That's epic, man. That's epic lineup. Yeah. And I actually, I've reached out to Ashley McIsaac and I sent him a, the original poster. And I said, I was at this show as a kid. And he was like, man, that was the best show ever. It was another roadside attraction with the Tragically Hip. Uh, so Ashley McIsaac and I have talked and, and he'll be on the podcast at some point, just like tying all of this, all of this together.